Hey guys. Um, yeah, as I sit here and look around at so many things not done and so many things needing doing and what to do next, um, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming, gets a little frustrating, but I guess if you're watching this, um, don't give up. I'm definitely not going to give up on this project. I'm going to see it right through to the end. Uh, no matter what it's going to turn out to be, no matter what it's going to be, I'm going to see it through. Uh, there's a lot of days where I want to give up. There's a lot of days where I want to throw in the towel. And uh, I just want to, you know, really tell you guys that are building these motorhomes that are converting a bus, is it's a pile of work. And uh, you just got to kind of pick one job at a time and, and try and do that. And... Once that job's done, you go to the next one and go to the next one. There's There's been a few days where I've looked around and I've seen the whole thing and it's just overwhelmed me and I've had to step away from it. And that's okay too. So if you step away from it, great, step away from it. But uh, always come back, always do the small jobs and, uh, and it'll get done, it'll happen. <sighs> well, here we are. Um, kind of what my thought was on the side just not quite working out the way that I had anticipated it work out. So I'm probably gonna go with something a little more rigid. This is obviously gonna have to be shrunk in order to work the way I want it to. Uh, it's, this is just too flexible, so. This is just a thin little piece of MDF. Well, here we are sitting in the bus, thinking, contemplating, wondering what the heck we're going to do. That ceiling is just, I don't know, it's not working the way I want it to work. So I see everybody else uses knotty pine or some sort of wood paneling or something. And I guess I'm probably going to go that route too, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Well, we're back again. I'm uh, going to give up on the ceiling and the walls for right now. I'm going to do some electrical work and possibly some welding. I'm going to weld uh, some more angle iron up on the roof to hold that drop down piece that I was telling you about before. And I'm gonna uh, put some conduit in the walls and run some wire possibly. kind of how I've done my electrical in the one wall. So this is going to feed the fridge. It's going to feed two plugs. This is going to feed two plugs and also power the light switch for lights and possibly a 14-3 wire for three-way switch. And then of course the big two by six wall. So far about an inch and a quarter. But I'm going to have a lot more tubes coming in and out with uh, venting and whatnot. I'll go down below and kind of show you what, what it looks like. I kind of dedicated this middle bay with stainless steel walls as my electrical bay. That way I can put everything electrical against a non-flammable surface. Um, but we've gone this route and uh, conduit through. So right in the middle I'm going to have a, a panel. I'm going to have some batteries in here. Do all that. conduit like I said earlier that's gonna run all my wire so they're not you know I'm not holding them up or screwing them to the floor or something like that into the bay that I took the air conditioning off the conduit runs in there at the very end this is gonna be the water bay my conduit comes from the wall comes down into the junction and across and then into my battery bay so that's one wall and that's another one. And they're both going to run 
run straight through with all the other so guys. we're still fighting as usual it's always a fight everything I'm gonna tell you something this silicone gluey stuff I don't know what it is but if you guys know what it is Prevo H345 it's on every seal drop me a line because I want to buy that stuff like one pipe no more rivets and it, it's holding the bus together it's incredible hey there I'm not too sure if you guys know or not but the actual fender panel on a Prevo comes off fairly simple there's uh, three spots one there one there and one down there it's just a pin you just move the pin to the side and it just lifts off um, but anyways this is where I have to get to to hook up my electrical this is right underneath in the diff area so different transmission so I didn't get super dirty um, but yeah we're gonna hook up this and it's so like that and then into the electric electrical bay hey guys well we're inside here and uh yeah this is the freaking dirtiest spot ever i'm gonna have to pressure wash in here when i had that dirty face that's what i was trying to do i was trying to get the hvac system from under here and it's just gross hey guys we got that box installed just like a Prevo it's gonna run right up against the floor it's gonna go right into the electrical bay and I'll be able to run wires in and out of that well, I guess the sun's finally came out but uh, yeah here we go let's start pulling some wires so we're gonna fish tape through first and then uh, yeah we're gonna pull the wire kind of jimmied up this stand for the wire so I can kind of do this on my own and yeah, well, let's see how it goes. Don't you love it when you're doing the electrical and you got the pliers in your hand and everything is going good and you think, oh, it feels a little wet. And you think, geez, where did I get that bump from? So yeah, a little bump. Hey there. Um, just going to uh, wire up some bathroom lights here. We need a three-way switch. And what that means is when you come into the bathroom, you're going to turn the switch on. When you leave the bathroom a different direction, you can turn the switch off. So you're going to have two switches for the same set of lights. And what that requires now is a uh, extra wire in your, uh, an extra red wire. So your common wire 14-2, that means a black wire and a white wire. And ground doesn't count, which is the bare copper wire. So 14 is the gauge, 2 is the number of wires in the sheath. And so now we're dealing with a 14-3. Once again, ground doesn't count. Red, white, black, 14-3. That's three wires in the sheath. So we're going to use that to travel between our switches in order to have a three-way switch hooked up. bit of a mess in here but this is kind of where we're at I've uh, put my second tube in here now and that goes to my electrical bay it also has a little uh, cut in it that goes to that wall and that's going to be for my three-way wire like I was saying the three-way wire is going to join the two switches the three-way switches and uh, we're going to be able to turn lights on and off in different locations so 
this is where we're at. Uh, you can see I have the fish tape there. So uh, once I get enough wire out, uh, I'm just going to attach it to the fish tape and pull it through underneath where I want. And I'll go down and show you what I'm doing now. Okay, so I said I'd show you uh, my second pipe. So that's it there. What I've done is I've just cut a hole in it just to bring the wire across. And it's going to go up right beside that tube there. It's just one wire. That's all it is. A short little distance out of the conduit but everything else is in the conduit I've taken that conduit and I've gone all the way to my electrical bay with it so that I can use it or utilize it in case I need to get wires into that wall ie solar something like that so it is available um, I just took uh, a little bit out of the side 